the way that you use the mouse is not the same as someone just typing a Word document, right? That's not correct. It's not the same, and it, it doesn't make Nobody any sense. Nobody using Microsoft Word needs to open up the side of their mouse and add weights. Yeah, to exactly. It to yeah, it doesn't make any sense. It's just not <laughs> to change the heft. Yeah. Scotch. Hey, everybody! Welcome to episode four hundred seventy-eight of Coffee with Butterscotch, the game dev comedy podcast of Butterscotch Shenanigans. I'm Seth, and I'm the games programmer. I'm Adam, and I'm the miscellaneous programmer. I'm Sam, and I'm the artist. And this is a show where we talk about life, business, and working in the games industry. Today's July 26th, 22 by 4. Before we get started, we have a warning. There's going to be profanity in this show. And we'd also like to thank our recurring supporters over at moneygrab.bscotch.net. Thank you so much for your recurring monthly donations to help keep the podcast going. Uh, wow, we just, I'm feeling good. We're right just on point that. today. Focused. Uh, so we got a couple... Couple little things to talk about, and then we're gonna see if we can get into some listener questions. So, first, we got a little bit of studio news, which it well, I guess not studio, but you know, game news from our studio, which mm-hmm. is that we're gonna be taking down the Crash Lands Two demo, as in it will stop being available uh, on August fifth, twenty twenty four. So, when you hear this podcast, that's the following Monday. Yep. You'll have the 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 weekend yeah. uh, to to play it. So yeah, if you haven't played, played it, it by get that in point, there. Yeah, get, get in, in there. there. And uh, we're so let's, let's, yeah. So we thought we we talk a little bit about uh, why you know because you know in theory we could just leave it just leave it there kind of forever yeah, definitely. Yep. Um, however, it's already the case and has been for quite some time that the demo is out of date mm-hmm. and is getting increasingly out of date. Of course, because we're constantly working on the game. And maintaining the demo means, you know, maintaining a separate sort of branched version of the game uh, and releasing stuff to to players, you know, takes quite a bit of very thorough internal QA and lots of tests. And, you know, you can kind of think about it like uh, when we're in active development, lots of things are changing all the time. And our QA team is testing the changes as they come. But when we want to release something publicly, we want to be more comprehensive, right? So it's not just testing like the few things that changed this, you know, yesterday. It's, all right, let's play through, you know, everything as much as we can and see if any of the changes from the past month or two or whatever um, have had any unintended effects on other areas of the game that we didn't expect kind of a thing, right? Mm -hmm. So we call that our, our internal cert, which is kind of derived from uh, like if you submit to a console, they have a certification process, which is just short shorthanded to cert, where you know they will have a bunch of guidelines for whether your game is acceptable to release in terms of bugs or you know technical issues or whatever. So we have our own internal cert that we run every time we release something, and maintaining a, a public facing you know uh, deployment like that is definitely pretty expensive, right? So because of that, we we haven't updated the demo. We kind of, you know, we released it, we patched it once, and now it's just vibing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so that's one reason, which is like, as we're getting feedback from players of the demo and stuff like that, it, it becomes less and less relevant and useful over time because we've already internally addressed most of those issues that people have brought up in the demo. Or maybe we'll just keep hearing about would, it, you know, for- those- that pe- those pieces of feedback just not be relevant anymore in right. some other way. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, the longer the demo sits, the less useful or less relevant the feedback we get is because it's just out of date, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but and the other then kind the of- the less reflective of the experience that you'll have at launch it is. And so yep. then- Yeah. The whole, per- the whole point of the demo is to be like, hey, is this the kind of game you're into? You know? And if the answer is, well, it might be if it was a little different- but also it is a little different, you know, than then maybe, maybe. <laughs> it's, it becomes yeah. harder to get that answer. Yeah. I think the other consideration is really the prime one, which is that uh, demos have a purpose in this context as far as yeah. what we're trying to make them do from a marketing standpoint. It's not just up so people can play the game. Like it's a very, I don't know, it's not a particularly useful frame because it's sort of like, it's like describing itself. You know what I mean? Like a demo is playable yeah, by it people. It exists, so it exists, you yeah. know, but like, but what are you, tra- what is it? What are you trying to achieve by having it be playable? Yeah. You know, that's the real question. So largely for us, it was participation in the next fest was just essentially the re- the whole reason to do it, you know? And so yeah. that's well and done. And we've given people plenty of time who had downloaded it to, to give it a try. So 
that's the big part of it. Um, well, it was, it was that and having something for streamers to play that was that that yeah. we knew was like production ready and could be played and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, and so that yeah. but that is yeah. kind of the follow up piece, which is that when something like this is available to the public all the time, that it actually becomes harder on the you know the influencer stuff to actually get them to bite on playing the game because it's no longer a thing that only they have or only people in that particular like, content creator uh, group have, but rather everybody has. It. So it's less of a uh, less of a special little little thing that people care about playing. So that's also part of it. It's sort of like a McRib, you know. You got to take it away so that when you when you bring it back, or if you give it to certain people, they're like, oh my god, yes, yeah. It's just about exclusivity. I mean, yeah. and it's it's kind of the same as like um, in the in the WoW streaming community. At the start of every patch, there's the race to world first, which is this big event that only happens in that moment, right? And everybody tunes in to watch it and all the big streamers try to get in on it and blah, 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 because it's this time limited thing that once it's done, pe- most of the people who watch that don't just day by day, they don't just watch WoW streams yeah, all the, the time. Idea. So it's just like some of that like limited time stuff is super useful for actually doing marketing right in the longer term. And so even though it's the case that uh, as of today, actually Steam announced a bunch of really nice changes to how they're handling demos. Uh, Everything from like the biggest one that would potentially, you know, jank up uh, the plan of that we're talking about here is that they made it so your demo actually can have its own store page and therefore can actually essentially surface inside of Steam. Almost like how people are doing like prologues and stuff like that as full separate store pages so that they can show up in trending lists and stuff. Demos will actually be able to do that now, which is good, mm-hmm. right? Um, and at the point where you release your demo, people who have wishlisted the game would actually get some kind of a notification or like a news feed update or yeah. something to get that. Which previously, because, you know, when we launched our demo, we'd already been on up on Steam for nine months or something mm-hmm. on the store page. Uh, and so we'd already accumulated a lot of wish lists. Um, and that didn't get to get leveraged at all to like show mm-hmm. sh- basically to, to reinvigorate the people who were already into the game be like, Hey, cool. Now you can get a chance to play it, et cetera. It just, it's like start from scratch, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah. Essentially like a lot of the stuff that we, that we a- added to the game for the demo is like pop-ups and buttons and stuff that remind people to wish list the game. Yep. So that they could yeah. like we could link them back out to the the Crash Two store page from the demo. So like we had to implement all that stuff into the game, but now it would just be something that just kind of happens essentially. Like you don't have to wish list it after playing the demo in order to hear about yeah. the game yeah. when it launches, right? And it's still like because you want to reinforce that, so it's still better to hook all those things in. It's because, good to have it. Yeah, but, but it you got some less, room now. <laughs> yeah, it becomes less required, right? And I, I think yeah. and it's all it's all the feedback stuff, right? Because I would say for you know for like a future next fest, for, we can't participate again with Crash Two, but for other people doing it, right? Um, this ability to kind of reinforce things better is really nice, right? Because it doesn't actually matter if people who because like we're just trying to get wish lists. That's the whole point of of pre launch work, right? Uh, it doesn't really matter if the people who wish list it get to play the demo because they've already mm-hmm. wish listed it, right? Yeah. But if they do play the demo and now the demo shows up in algorithmic feeds, then that boosts. The visibility right. of the demo shows it to more people who wouldn't have seen it, who haven't wished this yet, and so on, right? And so that was the piece, that like algorithmic interaction piece that we missed out on by not having these features exist when we were trying to leverage the demo. And yes. now at this point, we can't leverage any – like we just can't leverage the demo in any meaningful way, basically. Yeah, you can't leverage it again. You can't launch yeah. it again, basically. So, yep, so we're going to be flipping it off, you know, both – both mm-hmm. literally, but also in the back. With two hands. Yep. Just middle fingers. Just yeah, get out of here, demo. You know, You're here. done. You did your uh, job. Uh, rest in peace. Yep. You know? So if you want to get it on, <laughs> make sure you play it in the next couple of days because it'll be gone very soon. Yeah. Uh, so, oh. you know, sometimes it's just something, you got something out there in the public and it just gets too old, you know, and then it just needs to step down and mm. be done. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, totally you know, know what you mean. And I'm only talking about the demo and nothing else that's going on in the world right Absolutely. now. Absolutely. You know? Understood. Uh, so let's talk about tools yeah. and modifying them. Because Sam has some kind of story that I have no idea what it is, but I'm intrigued. All right. What's the deal? Well, here's the deal. So I've been working side by side with Anne, our artist. Uh, he's been putting together a bunch of assets for Crashlands 2. And it's the first time where I've had another person who's doing the same thing and basically having to solve a lot of the same physical ergonomics challenges that exist in the digital art space that really don't exist for like programmers in the same way uh, or like, or even physical artists because of the challenge of just how do you arrange your space? How do you arrange your tools? 
such that you can draw and also type on a keyboard and also use a mouse and also, you know, be on a video call and also see your canvas. How do you do all these things at once in a way that doesn't somehow break a piece of your body? Because it turns out- Every piece. You know? Or every piece, yeah. yeah. So, you know, I've used a Cintiq before, which is like the big fancy uh, screen it's tablet. a monitor you can write on. Exactly. It's just uh, like a giant tablet. Uh, and that's great. That thing's super great. But it requires then you're swinging, an, swinging it around a bunch on an arm typically. Uh, and then it will well, kind of- Just think about your normal ergonomics. You're sitting at a computer. Mm-hmm. The monitor's in front of you. So you're sitting, you can sit upright and look at it, right? And then on a keyboard, you know, your hands are down at at the desk and you're in a, a neutral sitting position, right? Mm-hmm. If you have to write on your monitor with a pen, then either your monitor stays where it is and you're just reaching way the hell out there mm-hmm. and that's bad, or you move your monitor down so that it's like down on your desk and now you're looking down the whole time, all yep. day, right? Exactly. And then yeah. your neck And it's explodes. also covering your keyboard, presumably. And yeah, and you can't see shit and you can't type either. And, yep. Yeah, yeah. You so know, in the yeah. last uh, two years or so, then I switch, switch up a bunch of stuff. So I got a keyboard that's broken in half I actually switched to a trackball mouse because turns out that having to wing your arm out and swing a mouse around both takes up a lot of space which again i need desk space for other stuff uh and then also like having your having your arms out there like that is hard so the trackball lets you just sit still right while you're working on something so I basically have a broken in half keyboard that if you think about it like cardinal directions almost it's like the center of the compass is actually the trackball mouse uh, west would be the left half of the keyboard. North is the right half of the keyboard, right? So you got this weird oh, okay. like, nonsense going on. Yeah, because there's no reason the two guys of the keyboard need to be next to each other, you know? Exactly. Right. Uh, especially if your right hand is drawing most of the time. So then, yep. and then to the right, to the east, then is the graphics tablet. Have so, you seen those setups where people just like strap two halves of the keyboard like to their sides of their chair? So that they have arm, yes. their arms just hanging down. <laughs> to do oh, that's yeah. fucking sick. Uh-huh. Yep. What? Yeah, it's oh. like, oh, they can go <laughs> right by <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yep. I didn't even think about that. Why? Yeah. Why are they? Why is the keyboard on my desk? I think if you really could, do that, you got to get holsters and then put rings on them so you can swing them around like revolvers. In oh the yeah. Wild West, yeah. You, you know? need you need a you need two two leather belts that crisscross. You know, mm-hmm. and then Strat- you got your you got, and you probably need some kind of a strong magnet or something on the back of each keyboard so you could like like snap them on uh-huh. to the onto the the leather straps and then just bam, bam, and you need to, to be able to fully touch type because you're not gonna you're not looking at those keys you know if they're yeah, good ha- luck. hanging down on your sides. Well, so, so this actually gets to the that gets to the thing. So this is like the this is the like you can purchase products thing, right? So yeah, you can buy different tools, right? But if, now approaching this point where the tools I have are basically they're as far as they can go without me somehow figuring out how to manufacture shit, right? Like whole yeah. things. Your needs are specific. Yes. So the question is, how do you take them from from that level then to like beyond where it's very custom? It's your your own lightsaber sort of a vibe, right? Yeah, you got to build your own lightsaber. Yeah. So a lot of people do something like 3D printing, right? You get a whole 3D printer, then you start modeling stuff, blah, blah. But I mean, it takes a lot of energy and time. And so Ann and I were talking last week because both of us were having some wrist issues after uh, doing our random art stuff. And after some surgeon around, found a few different things. And one of which is this uh, this product called Sugru. The S-U-R- S-U-G-R-U. S-U-G-R-U. And it's just a silicon glue slash clay mold thing that basically right. you can, you, you unwrap it and then you have like 30 minutes to mm. essentially do whatever you want with it. And it gl- it's like, it's sticky. So, so it it's kind of like an stuff. epoxy where it's like when you mix it's those like two epoxy. channels together, then it's like, oh, but got to do the thing real quick because it's good to turn yep. to cement. For some yeah. reason, my mind went to uh, mouth guards, you know. Yeah. It's kind of yeah. like, yeah, it's yeah. like <laughs> boiling a mouth guard. So, yeah. so, but it's it's basically like clay, so you can just fully shape it. And then it Ooh. slowly hardens, but it doesn't turn hard like, you know, like an actual clay. It's basically still, it's like a silicone. So it's still kind of like almost like a rubbery grip or, or like squishy. mouth guard. Kind of squishy. Um, but it fully holds its shape and all that. And so one of the things I've been having trouble with is that every that is damn dope. ergonomic grip that's sold for digital artists for your stylus assumes for some reason that you're going to click the buttons on the stylus with your index finger. Like a like a plebe. Yeah. You know? And the thing is, like, if you're drawing, typically the way you need to hold, basically the shape of the grip then is designed in such a way that it kind of sent, it puts your finger in a particular place, if that makes sense. Where... If you get one of these fancy ergonomic grips with like a belly on it, just one of the common ones, one of the ones I have, basically it looks like a fat goldfish impaled yeah. 
by your just got a, it's got a bulbous side to it. Yeah, the bulbous yeah. side is exactly opposite the buttons. So because visually to, that looks nice, but it looks ergonomically it makes no no sense at all. Right? So yeah, well, that, that's been my experience. So I don't know if I yeah. I don't think I hold a pen particularly weird. Well, but honestly though, I, I at one point like people always criticize how I hold pens and pencils. Because I, I, I'm right-handed, but I hold it like a left-handed person. Mm-hmm. So I kind of like tuck my wrist, wrist and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and so at one point I did some – like I saw somebody holding a pen in this way where I was like, what the fuck is going on here? Where they were almost like fit, like holding it like a fist kind of a thing. Mm-hmm. But their handwriting was great. And I was like, do I know anything? And so then I, <laughs> I went down this like rabbit hole of like how people hold pens and pencils. And there's like 40 different – grips that people use that are completely different. But it also They're depends on what you're trying to do. Like artists who use pencils to do stuff know also that like depending on what exactly you're trying to do in the moment, you'll hold the thing a little different. It's like yep. tennis, you know, you yeah. switch your grip up switch depending grip, on yeah. what your opponent's doing. Yeah. yeah. And so for me, primarily then like I like to be able to click the damn buttons with my thumb because otherwise if I try to do it with my index finger, I'm going to like You're going to jiggle the I'm going to jiggle the, the, pen, the pen basically, yeah. yeah. So it's way easier for me to like for how I hold it. So I was like, all right, you know, I bought some of this uh, this glue thing, Zugru, and it comes in all sorts of colors. It's, fan- it's like a fantastic little substance. Uh, just got some black, and then over the weekend, then just took like a half hour in the morning, cracked a few packs of it open, and just started like molding it and drawing and molding and drawing. And the grip I ended up with looks nothing like any of the grip <laughs> that you can buy. But So, so you had enough time by – so you you to mold it, you had enough time to then like try to use it to be yeah, like – Yeah, I'm just doing it while I'm – yeah, I'm yeah, just doing it because it's yeah. not like it's not liquid. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, it's yeah. kind of clay like. So, and then I just clipped it like use a bag, uh, like a chips clip, and hung it up on the on like a drying rack in the laundry room to sit for a day uh, while it like fully more fully hardened. Um, and then just this morning, I kind of expanded it a bit more based on my experience with it this week, which I just wanted it to be the same shape roughly, but like fatter in some places. So, just did that a bunch. Um, and it feels awesome to use now. And I can actually hit the fucking buttons with my thumb. And so the whole thing's been getting slicker and slicker. And then I thought, well, you know, I really like this trackball mouse I have. But uh, one of the things that's always bothered me is like clicking the left and right buttons. You kind of have to click like get click pretty far in, if that makes sense. Like mm-hmm. pull it, put, pushing your fingers in. So I was like, I could just technically make that button taller. Fatter. Yeah. So, <laughs> so I just, just put a little bowl of that. Sugru stuff and stuck it on the mouse. So the thing starts, like everything starts looking modded. It's crazy. You yeah. know what I mean? But it's well, working the, really yeah. well. Like just these little extra fun, inches here. Yeah, I think this is a fun thing you see. And you, know, you see this especially in the uh, like 3D printing community, right? Yes. Um, is there's a whole, there's that intersection of like ergonomics and making stuff, right? But, I mean, but if you think about like, if you think about a, the whole concept of like, oh, there's a right way to hold a pencil. Like the reason that that doesn't make any sense is because a pencil's design isn't about using it. It's about, we needed a way to put marks on paper, right? Mm-hmm. And in the, a way that we could manufacture. In a way that we could manufacture. A scale. In a way that you can like, <laughs> that you can, because it, because it has to consume it something, your right? So it, yeah, it doesn't do your hands, but it, has to, it also has to consume something to lay on the paper, which is the lead, mm-hmm. right? And that means if it's being consumed, that means you need to be able to reveal more of it, right? And so if you're going to be able to doing that, then the thing has to maintain the same kind of a structure over time as it's being consumed in some way, it's right? It's being ground down by a pencil so, sharpener. Yeah, yeah, so it makes sense for it to be perfectly straight. And then you get mechanical pencils, and those also need to be straight because otherwise you can't push the lead out, right? So mm-hmm. the shape of a pencil has no relationship to how you use it. To hands. <laughs> it's it's well, all it's, about manufacturing a, and, and the purpose of putting marks on paper, right? Yeah, it has a loose one. Because I think one of the things for me is like I've always – what I've always kind of wanted is almost like a – I have to describe, but just like a just like a ball, like a softball that has basically a pin poking out of the very bottom of yeah. it, right? For drawing purposes, where you could just sort of I don't know. It feels like it would be it the easiest thing for my hand instead of having to be all tight. Right? Well, think about it. Like like uh, if you're using a computer mouse, that's not a uh, half a millimeter wide exactly. cylinder. You know, like yeah. it's 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 big and fat, and it's shaped to your hand. And it like the other like if you were accustomed to using a mouse of a certain shape, and then you switch to a mouse that is the shape that we now under that we now use, right? Then like yeah, that would probably be a kind of an awkward. There's always a transition move, window, right? Yeah. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's worse. It just means that you're you're, you're underdeveloped in your skill yeah, but set. Even, you know, but even mice is the thing. same deal because like, mice also have a constraint, which is they have to know that they're moving and by how much and in what directions, right? And so they they need to be able to sit on a flat surface so they can tell that mm-hmm. of some sort, right? 
and they or have, have like, a ball. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and a ball is like an invention to like provide a new mechanism for that. But but the point mm-hmm. being that like the design of these things is first informed by their output and like what they're supposed yeah. to do and how they persist over time. And then secondarily, you then try to figure out, okay, how do we, how do we you actually figure that? out, how do you even use it actually? Yep. Right. Like, yep. and then after that, you figure out, okay, but now you're actually in this, like this, uh, the circular loop, right. Of like, okay, how do we use it? How does that inform the ergonomics? How does that inform how we could use it instead? And now you're in a circular loop, but all of that also is bespoke to the specific use case, right? Mm-hmm. Cause if you're an FPS, FPS game player, Mm-hmm. The way that you use the mouse is not the same as someone just typing shit in a Word document, right? It's not. Correct. It's not the same, and it, it doesn't make Nobody any using sense. Microsoft Word needs to open up the side of their mouse and add weights. Yeah, to exactly. It, to yeah, it doesn't make sense. It's just not <laughs> to change the heft. Yeah, it's not the same problem. And so I think this is, this is where the fun part of ergonomics comes in, where it's cool to say you're like you're finding ways to like get real fucking bespoke, right? It's yeah, real custom. You need it to be. Yeah. You need it to be really bespoke to actually make it so that the tools that you're using are properly tailored to your use case, but also to just the way that you prefer doing things and to the specifics of your own human body. Mm-hmm. No two people have the same size hands, you know? Like yeah, the thing I like about this, though, is that, like, I think previously, previously my, my understanding of, like, how you could approach this space was was through, it was kind of either something like, uh, you know, yeah, grab, like, figure out how to, I don't know, shape some wood or something. I can't use clay. I'm not going to, like, attach pottery clay to a stylus, right? That seems insane. So, like, figure out how to, like, glue some, cut some, wood or do some clay nonsense and like a more much more elaborate system or yeah go get a 3d printer and this hurt like 3d printing shit after designing it by learning cad or whatever yeah. and it's like can i just can i just squeeze the the out? Out? <laughs> yeah. so i yeah i, I would recommend it because it's one of those things where like it doesn't it doesn't have any upfront barrier you just like you just have it and you squeeze it and you're done and you're yeah. done and so if it's and, i assume and can, the main limitation is just it's it's good for kind of small stuff right because you i assume that's cost prohibitive when it gets big but also because it still stays kind of flexible it doesn't really like yeah i would i would assume if you're gonna make something like i don't know you would like, like could, make you, a could whole, you make a keyboard like a like a keyboard tent something that holds your keyboard up to like exactly the level that you want honestly you probably could yeah you okay. probably could. You wouldn't need a, a tent. You would just need to like to, you just need like to a little post, post like kinda. a couple of posts under. Or yeah. Whatever. yeah, honestly, it'd be great for that. Let's super would it stick that. to your? Because I'm not just kind of thinking about it. Because like, because one of the yeah. other problem I have left with my keyboard because I have a split keyboard also, <laughs> but I want to be able to tent them a little bit, like just a bit. You know, get some Sugru. Do it. Try would it. it yeah, would, yeah, I, would I have to have it be like affixed to the keyboard though? Like, would it be bonded to it, or can it just kind of like nestle? You could just nestle. I, like, I mean, you could just make the shape that you need, and then just set it aside to dry. And then right. I could, I could like push it in to like make the shape, and mm-hmm. it wouldn't stick at that point, or at least not stick hard. Is that? It would. Well, it's, yeah. It's not. It's 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 more like a clay until it's okay. like dried to a thing. If that makes sense. So yeah, you could. You could literally stick it to the keyboard to shape it, and get it all figured out, and then and just, just peel it unstick off. it and let it dry. Okay. Yeah. And you could, that's part of the whole shtick with it is like, because it's a silicone based thing, then you can just like kind of, you can kind of pull it off or cut it off of stuff and it doesn't leave yeah. much residue behind. So even if you do affix it to your keyboard and you're like, oh, this is bad, just rip it off. Yep. You guys like ever see that? Uh, I think this guy was maybe on TikTok or something, but he was this, this famous guy who would never say a word, but he would always like, do a video clip where somebody would do something really complicated. And, oh yeah, or, and then he and like just, really, and then he would just like do one thing and be like, and just stare at the camera mm-hmm. like, what the fuck? You know, I as, feel like this is like, like, why did you do it the complicated way? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like this is like three D printing versus just using this fucking goo. Honestly, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Like, I, that was the thing. I was like, they've got their use cases. You know, like it'd be hard to use like this stuff to like make a nut the size you need oh, yeah. to, to do whatever but, yeah. but but it's funny because like since this kind of thing is just off of our radar right then yeah. you know like when sam's describing this adam you're thinking 3d printing i'm thinking 3d printing sam's first thought was 3d printing mm-hmm. yep. and it turns out you can just squeeze some goo yep. and uh and you're done so. it's honestly it's great and i've like even this morning that i use it to add a little nubbin to one of my keyboard keys so i can easily tell where it's at you know on the, as i'm touch typing mm-hmm. and stuff uh, I accidentally hit the fucking little Windows button instead of Alt. Sometimes when I'm working, uh, my hand gets shifted around. So I put a little, like just a little tiny bit of it on there. So there's just a little nubbin on there. Yeah, which is, I guess, the same way because like the J and F keys typically have a little nubbin. Yep. So the idea is you could add it to other keys also. Exactly. 
Yeah. And it's like it's tiny and it just sticks on there. Just Which is also helpful because every keyboard's like the details of its layout of it, you know, are a little different, especially yes. when you get into modifier keys and other kinds of stuff. I, I know for mine, because mine has this like column on the left, like an extra column of keys on the left that are just like M keys, you know? And uh mm-hmm. and they're they're like there's a little like gap in between two. So like they're distant, yep. but they're but when I'm You're hitting hit the them fucking, all the time a bit. when I'm hitting the uh the tilde. Hit, which I do a lot because yep. in programming you need that a lot. So, or I got the tilde, but the back tick. So when I hit mm-hmm. that, when I hit that thing, there's like, there's like a ten percent chance, which is then frequent, that I'm gonna go somehow. It's still like I have to go like half an inch. No, to I had the, the, the previous thing, split but, keyboard. I had also had that thing going on the left side. And yeah. I don't know why, but like, yeah, I go to hit control or something, and in some portion of the time, yeah. you just fucking fly and over. And I think it's because yeah, I think it's because like it's enough of a gap that your hand just kind of like goes for it, you yeah. know, and like. Yep. And then you get, and really you only need to hit just the side of the other key to make it work, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. So that's so why yeah, same thing. You know, just like put a little line of this shit either on the yeah. tilt on the tilde key or like you know put a little ridge on all of those keys. So you actually like if you're going over yeah. there, you just kind of thump into it. You know. Oh, another thing. What I'm talking probably going to do is I'm going to disable that key because I use like I use the one next to the tilde to go my my Windows uh, desktop left to like move to mm-hmm. the, my left virtual desktop right, and the one below that to go the other way. But if I just stop using that top key and just shift things down, then I'll just well, stop doing that completely. Well, yeah, but you'll fun. still accidentally hit it. Just nothing will happen now. Unless I set it to tilde and now it'll do what I expect it to do when I accidentally hit it. True. I'm Many you know, you guys talking about putting bumps <laughs> on your keys gives me this thought about like every fucking car is getting more and more touch screens in it. Oh my God. Right. Yeah. Which is the worst because, you know, when you don't yeah, have tactile you don't. feedback, you can't, you gotta look. You, you have, you have to look directly at, at the thing. Uh, and then that kind of made me think all these fucking phone companies are like folding screen, foldy, foldy, we're going to mm-hmm. fold it. And then there's a new one, I think that's coming out. That's going to fold three times. Oh my God. Instead of two. Opening a newspaper. Yeah. It's like, are, are we going to have accordions for phones now? What the, what the fuck are we doing here? But you know what? What nobody's talking about is some kind of way to raise parts of the screen to create tactile feedback. Do if you could fucking do that. Oh, well, I think. The, oh my god, I a, would buy that phone. There, there's a know? new phone, a light phone, which is basically a, it's one of those dumb phones, so it doesn't have. Uh, but it doesn't have. <laughs> well, no, no, it's like it's almost like a Kindle screen, uh, like an e-ink screen. Oh yeah, but then their whole thing is it's a, it's designed for essentially thoughtful usage of a phone. So it doesn't have just like a direct line to the internet. It has a thoughtful has, usage, meaning it doesn't have apps, right? Like it's just a phone. Yeah. Like they release, just, they release like tools. And I think mm-hmm. currently it's like, there is a music one, but it's essentially you upload, like you move, move stuff to it before you head out with the phone. You know what I mean? It's like, it's just a phone. It's supposed to be just a phone, but that you can also have maps on, for example, I like guess kind of the, like the extent of it. Hmm. But they, their new newest one, Light Phone 3, which I've never actually had one of these, but the more I look at this one, I kind of want it. Tactile as fuck, where it's like, it's got like dials and stuff yeah. and like clicky buttons Ooh. for taking pictures and shit. Like, Give I'm sure the thing buttons. feels so good to use because you can actually, you know, click it and like feel, feel it doing stuff. I miss my buttons. I, I want my so buttons much. back on my phone. I, when, when we transitioned from the Blackberry to the t- touchscreen, thing is, I, I like the touchscreen for, Certain things. Certain things. Uh, wait, it's, do I? Well, it's, no, I don't. <laughs> no, 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 I don't. I don't it's like it. It's never great. It's it's <laughs> its benefit is just screen real estate. That's its whole fucking thing. You know, you can like, see more ads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, if you're gonna if you're gonna phone that can unfold three times, give me my keyboard back. Yeah, just put some I mean, my key, yeah, un- <laughs> put a keyboard in one of those fucking folds <laughs> yeah. so I can actually type. E- yeah, yeah. It, 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 like anytime I get a text, I'm just mad because I'm like, great, now I've got to use my big fat dumb thumbs and try mm-hmm. to type a response to this thing one letter at a time and then hit delete a bunch of times and then I realize I need to change something so I got to figure out how to how to get how back to in there. That. You know, oh my god, just. Just give me a keyboard. Yep. There is the I think BlackBerry started making uh, uh phones again, but I don't think it really took off. You know, I but they had like, they had like a, they had like an Android phone with a, with a keyboard on it. There are little keyboard the extensions. There's a little keyboard extension company that mm-hmm. start, that I think I just I found it like last year because I was looking for a little keyboard. But I think they came out right after I switched off of iPhone back onto Android, and it's only for iPhones. And I was like. Uh, Why? <laughs> but I think, <laughs> Which I think from a universalization standpoint, it's got a problem. Yeah, you gotta you gotta settle on something. Yep. Um, yeah, I th- 
I think the problem with it, because phones go in your pocket, it's the core problem, right? And so mm -hmm. you just have always have that limited real estate because and I think like, and I'm glad, like, I think the folding phone thing, honestly, is good if phones are going to keep being as big as they are, no matter what's on them, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, if we want to, if we want more real estate to put anything on, I already can't, it's, I can barely fit my fucking phone in my pocket and I purposely get the smallest phones I can get, you know? Like, yeah, they just keep getting bigger. Just, yeah, because I've now moved, like now I have to put it in my ass pocket. I used to be able to put my phone in my front pocket, you know, but mm -hmm. now, now if I do, it just kind of pokes out, you know, and it's, yep. and it's huge and it's like, it's kind of like wearing a splint, you know, like it would work <laughs> as a splint probably. Uh, so like, I saw so I, I, this whole, because I think the real estate fight on a phone screen is basically like you want to keep it thin so it can go in a pocket. It's got to be, I don't understand how they're getting so big because it's it's already the pocket limit we've already blown past. So I don't really understand what's going on. And once well, you're bearing, past the bearing pocket in mind limit, that for for whatever reason, most women's clothing doesn't even have pockets. So half of the, the demographic uh, for foes doesn't never had that problem. But they will maybe get to a point where they don't even fit in purses. Well, they know? always do because like, like, <laughs> women aren't just carrying purses well exactly like, yeah. in the house everywhere they go right so like but they have so then they have to just carry their phone in their hand or yeah, like, yeah. Or it's even worse pocket already because yeah the, the pocket limit for women's clothes is already yeah, got blown mm -hmm. past a million years ago uh but we just keep blowing past every pocket size you know no matter i think what's wild to me is like so. the, the actual gap the meaningful gap in size between like a phone you couldn't make a phone screen big enough for me to use it for like most things that are important to me, right? Feel good about it, yeah. If you're like, if I'm, I mean, that's what a Vision Apple Vision Pro is, right? Like, it's still an iPad in terms of its OS, but it's got like infinite screen real estate, right? As big as your you eyes, can, as big as you. This is the whole world, and it turns out that yeah, it's still an iPad, and it's, you just can't really use it for anything yeah, that matters. Us. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, like research something, or whatever. I need, I need a monitor that is huge. So, oh, there's you no want to way. see two things at once. That'd be nice. You yeah, know, like, there's no. Yeah. way to close that gap and have it be a phone even this if you is interesting though because because this because this behavior which to me also makes the most rational sense if we're trying to do something complicated and big like be able to quickly move between things see more than one thing at a time uh quickly type you know all this kind of stuff is like obviously extremely useful and to us it's to the point where we feel so unable to do that when we're when we're restricted to the li extremely limited uh mm -hmm. toolkit that a phone provides right but if you look at generations that are coming up behind us, that primary, like their primary computing device has always been a small touchscreen. Mm -hmm. The, like the idea that you wouldn't make a huge purchase on a phone, right? Like doesn't, that's confusing and weird to, mm -hmm. to, to them. Right. Cause they're like, well, it's, it's, it's the legit way you do things. Right. And so on. I don't know, but uh, they also like, don't know how to look at files. So I don't know. No, no, I'm not. Mean, I'm not. I'm not making a judgment here. You know, I'm just I mean, saying. I like, am at least a little. Bit. <laughs> just yeah, like, I'm, I'm just saying, like this, <laughs> this, uh, this, and this is why I say, like, there's, there's a truth to it, which it is true that if you're on like a desktop, or even a laptop, which is already worse, right? But you know, if you're on a desktop with a lot of screen real estate, where you can have two things open at once and do really fast inputs, because you can mm -hmm. throw a mouse pointer around and you can do hot keys on a keyboard and like all this kind of stuff, right? Like the the ceiling on how effective you can be at trying to do things is yes. just infinitely higher. Right. Uh, and, and it is to that point where like, I agree. I also like, I'll do limited research on things on a phone. If it, if it stays within like one system and I don't need to compare things to each other in a meaningful yeah. way, you know? Uh, but it's very limited. And I only do that because if the threshold of being like, I don't want to get off the couch is strong enough, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. then I'd be like, cause I'll be annoyed the whole time I'm doing it. Right. Uh, yep. but yeah, it's, I don't know. I think, I think it is, but I think it does have to do with that ceiling thing. Right. Because also depending on how able you are to do that kind of stuff on a desktop, mm -hmm. uh, if you're not really super fluent in using that to solve problems in this way, then the gap between that and a phone isn't as big. What's interesting though is I think there's a lot of, um, so I was helping our, our, our dad do some stuff. He, they moved, uh, to Connecticut, right? So they moved over here. So I was helping him with a few things he's trying to like a bunch of details right in the case of uh, it's like an internet provider thing and something else like that and we're on his laptop working on it and he always gets kind of frustrated working on tech stuff um but what was interesting speaking to what you're talking about adam is that he's on so he's on his laptop using a trackpad oh yeah and so i'm sitting yeah, there which he's always this, done 
Yeah. yeah, he's always done. I mean, since that was since that became available, basically. But yeah, trackpads are just rough, though. They just yeah. I look at that and I'm like, I feel like because there was a number of times where he would try to you know, click on something or else and it wouldn't take the input. But so yeah, I'm, I'm just watching just like, on a micro level all this happening, and then the stuff he's doing is complex enough and needs enough of that like referencing of other things so that you can like paste your shit into this form or you know that just this total screen real estate, even of a laptop. It's a nice laptop, but like you know, even just of a laptop screen. Just all these things just start stacking up where it becomes mm -hmm. just baseline, like a way more frustrating experience because you're trying to do a thing that's kind of detail oriented and kind of complicated, but with a tool that is naturally clumsy at this point, right? Oh yeah, and, and I mean, but he's like he'll say things, and I've, I've heard this from a lot of a lot of people who kind of work in that same way, where they'll say stuff like, "Man, you guys like you work all day on the computer, like how how do you, like how do you actually do that and physically not go crazy?" Yeah. You know, and I'm like, well. It looks very different because yeah. you have a lot of flexibility in how you set up your space and what tools you're using. Once it's on and, a laptop, you know, you know, yeah, right. Because like if it's a laptop, it's the whole thing's integrated, so you can't, you don't exactly. actually have any choices. Yeah. yeah. So if, if you just work on a laptop, and also like the ergonomics of a laptop are garbage, right? Mm -hmm. Like yeah. everything is all in the wrong place. Everything is in the wrong place, and so uh, yeah, I can see how like if you're if if ninety nine percent of your time using a computer is that, then mm -hmm. I would like to be like, yeah, you just can't wait to get off of that damn thing. Yeah. Of go course. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get away from it. It's terrible. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, you guys want some questions? Yeah, let's go. Yeah. All right. Uh, highest uploaded question from podcast.bscotch.net comes from Grumpy Gramps, who says, do the bros have any recommendations for self-help and productivity books? I'm getting into that genre more and was wondering if you guys have read any that resonated with you. Mm. This is a this is an interesting one. We we've all we're been on the now. journey, I guess. Yeah. But we've but we're we're like we're kind of very on the other side of the journey. Not in the sense that we don't need help anymore, but in the sense of the self help sort of genre uh, has it has diminishing returns very quickly as a genre. The, the whole idea is like somebody will take like a blog post they wrote and be like, "Oh, I can make money if I turn this into a book, right?" And so, and there and there's some like there are some benefits to like repeatedly showing Absolutely. a message, you know, mm -hmm. uh, if that's what you're doing, and if and showing like different examples of the thing. Uh, and, and there are also some cases where like you need enough space to truly like explore something, right? But by and large, what these what these books are is just like somebody kind of filling space with a core idea that. Mm -hmm. That's that maybe good, you know. We'll see. Um, sitting with it, sitting with it for long enough is the important part. If that makes sense, which is kind of what yeah. the book is for. So I, I think about almost less like filling a space and more like um, giving it time. It's, it's yeah, like bread. It time you know, you got to give it time to rise. Yeah, yeah there's a reason. Yeah, why. yeah, 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 yeah sometimes like, that's what it is. Yeah. yeah. If you read yeah. a tweet that's a productivity quote, most of the time you're like, or, okay, whatever, and then you move the fuck on, right? It doesn't stick. So I think there's. Well, I, oh, I think I think though, the, like your explanation of this is is I think indicative of of the real like what the actual problem with productivity is, which is uh, people are always trying to find new like uh, processes or like methods or ways of thinking about. Yeah, you know, like if think about the, the getting things done book is like a pretty mm -hmm. popular old one, right? Um, of like here's this technique, you know, you, every day you, uh, you make this list like this and you make another list like this, and then you mm -hmm. evaluate these things and blah, blah, blah. Um, and that's going to work for, if you do it, it's going to work for you probably for a little while. And then it's a lot to fucking keep up with. So you start to stop and start seeing some cracks. So, in it. so what, what I think all three of us have kind of gotten to is we've all read that book and many, many other books. And if you kind of zoom out more, uh, to kind of a, a higher level, to me, there's, there's one kind of unifying, uh, uh, theme of it, which is mindfulness and structure. So mm -hmm. like if you give yourself time in whatever way that looks like, like in the case of the getting things done, you're just giving yourself time to think about what you're going to do for the day or whatever, yeah. right? In a certain structure, but the point is the time, right? Um, and, and then the other, the other piece of it is trying to find ways to make it so that you have inbuilt structures around you that automatically get you the results that you want, right? So so like I, I remember at one point I uh, I got a question from somebody at an at a, like a, an event that I was speaking at quite a quite a ways back maybe like six years ago mm -hmm. and they were and this was somebody who was like hey my dream is to be an indie developer but I have such a hard time with motivation what do I do and I was like what do you find yourself doing when you're not motivated and they're like oh I watch Netflix you know and I was like unsubscribe yep. mm -hmm. right <laughs> like whatever it is that is in your way, get it out of the way, right? Um, 
it's, it, you know, and like, and this is the same advice you have. Like if somebody says, oh yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to lose weight and I just can't do it. Right. And if you open up their pantry and it's full of tons of sugary processed foods and stuff, you're like, well, get that out of there. You know, yeah. so that make if it, you go, make if, it harder to do the things that you shouldn't be doing or don't want to be doing, and then make it easier to do the things that you should be doing. Or yeah. Don't be doing. It's not yeah. about which, willpower, which right? also like, doesn't, and it's not, it's not curative either. Right. Because the yeah. idea here is like, and I think this, this, to me, this is like why it's, People are looking for the secret. That's why there's a whole fucking book called The Secret, which is one of my most hated books in the universe. But, like, <laughs> but there's, but there, but that's actually the, what we've all been doing when we like go down our self help journey, right? Is we're like, there must be like, all, things there are must so be hard, something, right? A thing. Things are so hard. The, the things that I want are not the things that I'm getting. The things that I, the ways I want to be behaving are not the ways that I'm behaving. Mm-hmm. There must just be some fucking secrets out there because it looks like there are other people who are doing it, right? Mm-hmm. And, the real secret is that most of those people are going through exactly the same struggle, right? And all you're seeing is the success on the surface, right? Mm-hmm. That's like the first secret. And the second one is that the actual secret is just – it's boring as fuck actually it's because so like boring. like like you guys are saying, you make the – you make the hard things easier and the easy things that you don't want to be doing harder mm-hmm. a little bit to the best just of your ability. Just by changing the structures. Just by changing some structures do, and doing the best you can so that you're trying to remove willpower as much as you can from the equation. But you never will just get rid of it. It's going to be – it's just – because like because you're going to go to the grocery store to get groceries, you know? So like mm-hmm. you, yeah, still, so you, you still have to come up with the rules, buy right? those like, things, you know? Like, yeah, so, like don't go into the center aisles, right? Like yeah, if you do if – you, if you make little rules like that for yourself – uh, then yeah, you're much less likely to to fuck things up. But it's up. also you, you have to you also have to like not be extremist about it, right? Because if because if your approach is like okay, I'm just not allowed to have sugar, period, or whatever, right? Then that's that's the recipe for like eventually just going nuts. Eventually you go nuts, yeah. right? There's like yep. and so the real secret is that you have to continuously make small adjustments all the time. Yeah. But structural ones, structural like, ones, yeah. Not like just be like I'm gonna try harder to eat less sugar. Yeah, and it's yeah. Like, yeah. and then just. The, yeah. And then the changes will happen slowly. That's mm-hmm. that's what will happen if you, and by needing things to happen now, right, and that kind of thing. That's what makes it always fall apart because the only way to get now is with extreme changes. Extreme changes cannot or will not be maintained. It yeah. it doesn't happen. And so but, the real secret is boring as fuck. Which as you're saying, you think about it. You, you just think about what's going on and you ask, are there some are there some changes that I can make that I can maintain. And that will give me the kinds of changes I want to see over time. There's, there's also a, there's a mindset aspect to it, which is if people think about things in terms of, I want to write a book, but I'm just like waiting for inspiration, you know, or like, oh, I have this, yes. I've been working on this game, but like, I'm, I just, I, I can't find the, the motivation. And it's, it's actually backwards uh, in the sense that, that the thing that will motivate you to, to work on your game is spending time working, spending enough time working on it such that it occupies enough space in your mind uh, that even when you're not working on it, your brain keeps churning on the the problems. Yeah, and you the, need the, the interesting, interesting problems things to solve. You know, not yeah. So again, it's just yeah. about time. Like like if you if you just say yeah, I'm just gonna two hours, two hours tonight. I'm gonna do nothing but work on my game. Block the time out, right? And even if you get literally nothing done other than just like thinking about the game, writing some stuff down, daydreaming, you know, if you just give yourself that space, then then easy answers start to come yeah. of like what's going to happen next. Like you don't need motivation. You don't need willpower. You just need an easy answer of what do I do next? And if the, and if that's a big foggy but hard to answer question, then yeah, you're just gonna There's go do to something do. else. <laughs> yeah. well, I think I think it's yeah. to me it's part of the thing is um recognizing how important curiosity is to solving most of this problem. Yeah, at least that's like the crux of it. Yeah, it's like so if you if you're approaching one of these things that you want to do, right? So whether it's I wanna get more fit or yeah, write a book, make games, whatever. I think part of it is is not then if let's say you said I'm gonna set aside two hours tonight. You quote unquote set it aside, but then you don't actually do it. Like you literally don't even don't even get started on it. Instead of beating yourself up about like the failures of that, you just gotta start asking like, "That's interesting. Why did yeah, I? Why didn't I? Why? Why was that hard? Why did I do that?" And then and then again, you just like try some experimental shit. Okay, okay it's so, not a personal failing; it's a structural problem, right? Yeah, like yeah. 
don't judge yourself. Just think, about, what was around me that made this hard? Or what yeah. was going on in it's my life? It's all you know, about pushing life? the problem left. Left is in like, if you think of a workflow moving from left to right, right? There's like everything. There's no, there's the, the whole There's idea. some upstream problem. That and there's you always solve, something you know? else upstream. That's the whole, there's yeah. no like, there's no ultimate cause, right? There's just always something else upstream. And so it's, yeah. So it's when things aren't going the way you want, you have to like look as far left as you can imagine, right? To figure out like where are there things the, the more leftmost you go and to make those changes this is what we talk about this in work processes too it's, the, it's exactly the same idea it's the same problems right uh, the more left you go the more effective those things are right because mm -hmm. they happen earlier so they they accumulate as they roll downhill to affect all the other things this right? is why you get that that stupid core. And willpower is now right that's the yeah, worst part right now right. yeah but the, the funny core thing about this is like the best way to end up doing the things you want to do is to sleep really well and you know, work out every so often and eat and eat well and stay hydrated, hydrated, right? Those are the furthest left things that are available in terms of like your health, just boost. health and yep. have, safety, have yeah. some friends, you know, talk to people every so often. Like there's a bunch of these things that they are, when you say them as like, Hey, if you want to do the thing you want to do, do go outside, just be a person <laughs> yeah, in the world more effectively first. And then well, start and those shaping are, it. Those aren't the furthest left because each of those has a whole bunch of stuff left of those too that, that make those challenging. And for different people, different degrees of challenging, right? Mm -hmm. But – and it's also not strictly left because everything is a net, right? So it's all a tree, right? So like – so those dramatically change the difficulty curve. Like if you can – if you can shore those things up, then you can dramatically reduce the things you need to do and it's kind of some other branch, right? Because they because they all talk to each other. And, mm -hmm. and that's part of it too, is identifying those things that is it like a strict dependency? Is it like just left? And if you and if you can just like fix that, you fix this thing, right? Or is it yeah, very uh, few loose dependency? <laughs> or, yeah. And most things aren't really that clean. Like almost everything no. is like some kind of a loose dependency that that talks. And so no, that, that's just, why yeah. just talk about like like doing that work to shape an ergonomic handle for my pencil right and it's yeah. like that is you don't need to do that if you're just trying to get started like you don't even you just not that's not a thing that's, you need to that's not what's yeah once you've been drawing non-stop for 10 years then that's a problem you'll have but that's not a prerequisite to get started yeah, yeah. And, like, and also but even for but me, also like, similarly have, that has weird outcomes downstream unrelated to it because now you're Correct. now you're going to physically feel better you're less likelihood of you becoming decrepit you are less that's the big uh, frustrated and annoyed yeah. during the day all this other kinds of stuff right that have nothing to do really with like the do like it makes the art better yeah but that also has these other and i think that's the the key of all of it is that everything is interconnected everything interacts with everything yeah. and taking the time to think about where those connection points are and where you can systematically yeah, I think if you can if you can reflexively develop a tendency to whenever you're whenever you're getting down on yourself about say your productivity, about how things have been going for you, distance to your goals, whatever, if you can start developing a reflexive tendency to fill that space not with the kind of self-loathing that just tends to show up in there. It's not about you. Just look around. Yeah, just with a, just a question mark and be like, interesting. If you just say that's interesting that I completely failed to do X today, or that's interesting. I haven't made any progress on my weight goal this week. Like it, it just, it open it cracks the whole thing open in a way that I think can be so useful. And it's just so much more like mentally, it's a lot easier to withstand than the fact that this is a constant, this is what life is. Like, it's I don't know how else to it's a framing of like, instead of thinking like I'm working on myself, right? It's, it's, I need to work on the things that make me what I am. You know, because you don't exist yes. as as someone once said, you didn't just fall out of a coconut tree. You, know, <laughs> you exist in the context of all the things around you and the things that came before you, right? Okay, so a lot of topical references on, yeah. on this one. So yeah. so like and this is our whole job. Like what do we do as game developers, as game designers? We create structures that make people do things. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's it, right? Like however we design an interface. That's going like wherever we put the buttons, mm -hmm. how big they are, where they are, what's glowing, what's bouncing, like all those little things will make, like we can make somebody click a button. We yeah. can make somebody well, do that, right? Not all the time as we've experienced. That's what's so hard. Well, that's, yeah, but that's the thing. It's, it's, it's fuzzy, <laughs> right? But, but, that's, but that, that's my point. Like, but we can, we can make somebody. There's the observational component after that, right? There's the, there's the design and then there's the observation because yeah. just because the design should cause the thing you're trying to cause, whether it's in a video yes. game you want. It won't always. Whether it's real life, it yeah. doesn't. And just because it did for somebody else or some other video game or whatever, right? That doesn't mean in this context, because every context is different. 
that that's going to be the outcome. And that doesn't have to be an indictment. It just means, yeah. oh, like I just can talked we change last week about how I've been going to the gym a lot more because I got some new clothes. Yep. Yep. Right. Like for me, it was, there was, and it took a long fucking time for me to recognize, <laughs> hey, you know, maybe if I felt better about just about myself being at the gym, then it would be more fun and rewarding to be at the gym. Mm-hmm. And right? it's the annoying thing about all of these is that so many of them are so fucking obvious. It's so it's obvious, but you can't so see, so it. Dumb. I, see it. But that's also what's fun to me about like cliches and stuff. You're like a lot, a lot of these things that when you hear them when you're young, you, I don't know, you hear them so often and they also – they they're so dumb sounding that it's like, well, obviously, yeah. If I feel good about myself, well, the things go better. Like, duh. But but the reality of like the precision of it in real life, how hard it cuts, and occasionally when you see it, really show up in these ways, and you're just like, oh, that's it's that's just why. true. It's just yeah. true. But but yeah. <laughs> recognizing that something is true, and then uh, experiencing the reality of that are kind of two very different. But there's also the actionable part, which to me is the most important. And I, and I think where a lot of this stuff kind Maybe of falls that's what flat. About, yeah, yeah, because yeah. I think where a lot of this stuff falls flat is the disconnect between what the action is and what the what the self help sort of claim is, or 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 what the cliche says, right? And and I think a lot of that is because the way that we talk about it is we're like, oh, you like you just have to stop doing whatever, or you just you just have to not feel bad about this and like these kinds of things, right? That aren't actually things you can do. Like you don't get to choose. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do I feel bad about myself because I didn't do the thing that I was said I was going to do, right? Oh, you're going to have to That's just what happens, right? You yeah. don't get to choose that. And but the question is is how do you how do you deal you with turn that, that into right? action? Cuz you also you can't know? help perseverating on. That's that's what's yeah. going to happen, right? And and the problem with these things is that if we treat them like, oh yeah, just quit doing that, right? People can't quit doing that because it's just what happens. And so then people – then it actually – and this is where – if self-help sort of strategies are insufficiently nuanced and that don't take into account the emotional realities of what it means to be a person, yeah. right, actually do more harm than good because they make you think that other people are They're just like – just doing it. Oh, yeah, are just doing that because that, that's not what they mean literally. They don't literally mean just like stop feeling bad, right, because nobody can do that. You yeah. feel what you feel. You feel what you feel. 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 And then yeah, what they mean is like trigger work, for a moment, right? Yeah, what they, yeah. What they mean is work on recognizing that's happening and yes. trying to treat that as just a factual occurrence. Like, yeah, I feel bad, and and you feel it, and you're gonna feel it, right? But trying to figure out how to like observe the fact without adding additional like rational judgment on top. I will right? say I do have a tremendous pet peeve with. Not actually with self-help books, but with people who read self-help books, okay? Mm, Which is- Those people. Reading the book, reading it, has doesn't do anything, okay? You got you to do something. Yeah. And so like my, like, so what I typically do if I'm reading a book that falls into that category, or frankly, actually any book, literally any book, my, like, whether it's an animation book, whatever else, any book is, I'll take notes, like, simultaneous while reading it. Either in the margins or on a legal pad. It's my Sam favorite. basically compiles a book report of every book that he reads. I literally make book reports, <laughs> and like, you know, I was a catch up with my friends, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I'll give you a call after I, I finish this, uh, this book wrap I'm doing." He's like, "Book wrap up," because you know he's also what are you? What are you twelve? Yeah, he's like, "What are you? What, what are you, are you thinking mean? about stuff, weirdo?" That's what it is. It's like, okay, someone's talking about I don't know how time applies to X, or like how you can think about your day in terms of these work blocks, and it's like, do you have any questions? about yeah. that Does, popping up? If you don't how would ask that how that applies, yeah. Yep. Yeah, how would it apply to what I'm doing here? How would it apply to what I have experienced recently, want to experience? Like, even like just a few fucking bullet points per chapter of one of these things you read. If you just mm-hmm. take some notes, you will not believe. Like, there's a meeting people who talk about loving self, like who are very into productivity stuff, and then talking to them for 10 minutes about how they do stuff. Drives me absolutely insane because nine times you out of ten, you can tell that they haven't actually applied. Yes. <laughs> they're like, "Oh yeah, I love the book," and then you start asking them about stuff, and they're like, "And they just don't. They haven't. They haven't actually integrated any of it right into yeah. what's going on." Well, that's, that's a good that's, note that's, because, like, there's a reason why self help books, plural, are a genre because people keep buying them. Yeah, if they without actually doing what they say. Yeah, if, if they really like, if it worked permanently, right? You'd only or, need was one. Yeah, you know. One. Yeah. Well, that, yeah, that would implies, be a genre. But that implies that they are sufficient to actually help in the first place, right? 
Uh, they are to me. They're, just, they're like, all a piece. A piece of yeah. They're all they're all a piece. Like, there's a, there's a good re- there's can be a good reason. There's no end of self help books because there's no end of dimensions along which you could you know, yes identify. Or I agree. I think I think to me it's like if you find yourself if you find yourself searching okay in this way for a thing. So finding a self help book is a way of you saying one of the things that I know how to do right in order to better my situation is to find someone to learn from right. Yeah, context. do some research. Yeah. So. Again, that's just to me. That's a clear signal. Like I want to, I want to do better. I want to figure stuff out. I want to change. Um, but it's one of those things where it is the first step with regard to any of those books you read. And ideally, you're walking away from those books because again, a lot of them are good. You know, and it, I could list some, but like you could just kind of kind of Google well, them. You, you also don't want to like go on a binge of like reading five different ones. Like like read one, sit with it, do some stuff, think about it, do some stuff. Then decide whether you think you have still missed the mark, you know. So I, I will recommend one Do it. that I that I feel like is I, I don't I never feel like it was a, a self help book so much as just like a good a good lens through which to view why you do things, which is the power of habit. Mm-hmm. So that that's the book that kind of talks about how most of the things that you do are automatic behaviors. Yeah, I would say and, that one or Atomic Habits, depending on kind of how you like what writing style you prefer. They're basically the same. To be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, but also, you know, each one has pieces like because I've read those too, right? And there were pieces that I was like, oh yeah, and there were other pieces where I was like, mm, nope, this is not, nah, this not is, for yeah. me. either, so either again, like either again, I just don't think, think about true, it, or at least <laughs> yeah. it's not true for me. Yeah, well, and I think, and to yeah. me, this is like that speaks to my main pet peeve about the genre, which is it's prescriptivist, um, meaning that the strategy of like the self help genre is like here's how you do X, and like, and then it's it's a it's a prescription. It's like, and there's a reason for that, which is that. Uh, it's really hard if you're the person trying to convey some idea to accurately understand the context in which that idea worked for you, right? Um, yes. And and so so there's one of the books in particular that I read that was like <laughs> that, again there were pieces of it that I liked. I, mean, I think it was one of the Cal Newport ones. I think um, by Deep Work, I would guess. Yeah, I think it was Deep. Yeah, I think it was Deep Work. It was like, there were pieces of it that I liked definitely. Like that. I think there was like little nuggets in it that I was like, oh, this is I, can, I think I can like make some use of this. But for the most part, I was like, this sounds like something an academic, like an, an academic life. This is a good self-help yeah. book, right? Most, if you're I living an thought, academic life, that Yeah, works. I got his most recent one, uh, which has – actually feels like it's veered so far into that territory. It's about basically being able to take time to do stuff, right? Yeah. And he tries to like acknowledge that it's just like very hard to do or impossible to do for most people almost all the time. Yeah. But yeah. it somehow doesn't like – that doesn't factor in it, well, the it's, conversation. It doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> not in a way like that makes you fully. think maybe I shouldn't read this. You know, is that? Yeah, well, was like, yeah, I was reading it. And I was like, I feel like Cal Cal's living a different life than I got, and like yeah. I don't think the way he's talking. I I understand, of course, it would be dope if I could take x amount of time to do whatever and not worry if about i could stuff. take a sabbatical for a year and write a book or, or if i had you know. summers <laughs> off like of course cal it would be fucking nice but it's like it's this there's definitely some a gap nobody has there. the problems that you have you know exactly. you have a you always as an individual will always have a very unique set of combinations of problems that yeah. almost nobody else on but earth because, has right yeah. but because they're hard to they're, hard, they're because you live in them the problem this, itself this, is hard to articulate Right. Yeah, it's the water yeah. you're swimming in, right? And that's true for also all these self-help people is that yep. they're swimming in the water of their context. And can't so it. most of it they can't see. Most of it they can't acknowledge and understand how that influences the kinds of like ideas they have, right? And because of that, they also can't tell you that. Reminds me of like there's that comic of like what, two fish and one of them is like, wow, the water's kind of warm today. And the other fish is like, what's water? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like but I think it's, it's, that's just everything. That's just what you live yeah, in. You, you can't, can't see it. it. Yeah, you know? I think what it comes yeah. down to though is like you – for a self-help book or whatever, or even just advice you're giving to people, you have to be prescriptive because you cannot, you cannot know. And I think part of the failure to me of like people interacting on say like social media or whatever else is for some reason getting mad that someone doesn't f- somehow fully know your context in a way that allows, that would make it to the, the way that they're addressing a problem and suggesting you address a problem uh, perfectly applies to you. Right. How, well, how would yeah, I do this? You're, if, if you're I, supposed to, you know, think yeah, you, about yeah, you close the why they're like, saying Well, the, the problem is the who is this for problem. Because like, because in social media, it's that it's all public all the time, right? So there's, you can't you tell. Everybody. Yeah. You can't tell who something is for and you always see it in a vacuum. And, and it's probably so, posted by a bot. Yeah. <laughs> and so, but but it, it is true that to some extent, but you're right that we have to, but the reality of the medium is that you're constrained by how like nuanced you can be, right? But you also know oh, that you're yeah. you're saying stuff to the entire world. So you want to make sure that you've thought at least a little bit about like who am I talking to? Can I try to like frame this so that 
there's at least some indication of who I'm talking to. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah. But I think there's, there's a reality in that this to me is it's the same thing with reading a self-help book, which is that, which is that it is a, it's a collection of ideas that are coming from a context, right? Yeah. And they, they will never, they never have, nobody will ever, even yourself will be able to perfectly apply any one of these things off the bat to you. Like yeah. we've been working in games, for example, for like 12 years. We are still like annoyed by some of the same things we've been annoyed by the whole time, but in ways now where, where it's, it's like a different annoyance. Cause we've, we've gotten, we've edged, we've like figured some stuff out, right. About how to, how to do it or how to manage it. But I, I, I wouldn't trust myself to somehow get it perfect, get a perfect translation of like what I'm trying to do and how it meets me in reality in my context uh, without basically relying also, I, you have to rely on you to then translate always anything you get out of these books into how it actually fits for you. And if you don't do that piece of the work, like if you're not willing, interested or willing to do that piece of work, then it will not be anything but some pages to you at the end of the day. Yeah, like but I think that, to me, that's what drives me crazy about the industry is that people are not taught how to do that or to do that, right? It's it's something that if you that you can learn over time or that I mean like depending on what your schooling looked like, you may have somebody may have tried to teach it to varying mm-hmm. levels of success, right? But the the average person is is, ba- is essentially taught that like books are where the truth is, right? So like you read the book, right. there's the truth, right? Uh, and and Not so that the follow on step that is like yeah of, of, of basically what reading comprehension because reading comprehension is understand the thing in context and then try to like understand and then try to pull things out and see what they look Moving. like mm-hmm. in another context and ask yourself is it still true like is it still useful or whatever right? But this, um, but this also applies to like if you see a video of somebody and they're like. Yep, I'm a successful business owner. Here's what my morning routine looks like. Yeah. I get up at four thirty in the morning. I eat exactly this, this food, right? And yeah. it's like that is that is false. This yeah. person does not do those things. And even they, if they, it costs did. nothing to make an Instagram video. Sure, but and even if, claim that you do, even shit. if they yeah. did, like because because again, a lot of people have kind of extreme routines, right? That's kind yeah. of the fun and, part. And about. the thing is, like those are those are things that they might be doing when they make that video. But will they be doing that next year at the same time? And yeah. did they do it last year? I, even ooh, if, think, no, think even if is, all of that was true, it doesn't matter because that all exists in a that's broader them. context. That's for yeah. their yeah. Yeah, yeah. situation. Well, the one yeah. that I like to see when I see currently everyone talking about is like the Huberman. So the Huberman Lab, which is this really good podcast um, by the Stanford uh, like, like neurophysiology professor. Uh, who basically just goes on these deep dives about like how various systems work, right? How does like dopamine work in your body and then talks to someone about what that means for you, right? There's this, uh, this again, prescribed kind of routine for the day that they suggest based on all this stuff, which is about essentially like when, when do you eat? When do you do your first, like, when do you do some exercise? Like try to watch the sunset, you know, like all these things that my favorite video on it so far has been someone, because there are tons of YouTubers who are like, I did this here, I did the human lab routine for two months or whatever. Like, here's, here's the results. My favorite one was this woman who was like, I adapted this because it's not possible for me to do <laughs> Like, yeah. and here's yeah. what that ended up looking like as a person who fucking works and has to ride the subway every day, right? As and a I was human like, being who lives in a society. Yeah, and the thing is like basically hers. look at what the thing is, understand what its goals, like, because the question is always why? Why are the yeah. things what, yeah. they're, what they're being prescribed? And, and then if I translate that yeah, to my, yeah. But hers is like one of the videos that actually, again, did the best because guess what? Like the translation of the work into a particular life as an example of it, of like what you need to do is some of the best stuff you can see about this, in my yeah. opinion, which is like, because the, the idea, there's all these ideas are around. You could look up a thousand books about how to think about your day, how to think about your life, how to think about work. The translation is where all the value is. And it's so, and so unfortunately, it still rests on you. Yeah. To do and this that is why I always say work. there's no secret. There's not a secret that someone can hand you that like, oh, now that I know that, finally, like all my maybe I can solve well, all my problems. Right? If, to me, it feels like that is the secret, which is like the trans- you got to put it. You got to put in the thought and the yeah. translation and is you, the work. Yeah, is yeah. the important the, work. Not the, the secret is there is no secret, right? That yes. you, you have to do. The but, work. but well, the se- I think it's it's about understanding what it actually looks like to improve your productivity or your time management or whatever, right? It's not about what's happening on the inside of your brain. It's not just like, I really want to be better at this. Uh, and True. now I just got to try harder, right? It's like, no, you need to understand how all the things around you are, are influencing this. Uh, and if you read these books about like, somebody's like, yeah, here's my routine. 
right? Um, again, that's not something that's just like in their brain. It's something that they're physically doing in in the world. Yes, but but they're also not distinct, right? Because those two things influence other influence each other really dramatically, right? The kind of yeah. brain that you've got, and then also what you do to well, your brain. They they right? only do but, if but, you do stuff. Yeah, but my point being, sure, like, yeah. it's not about it's not about inspiration, motivation, or willpower, right? It's about structure. It's about routines, structure, and understanding why, right? So, if you're gonna like, so I, I'll say, since the question was, you know, what self help books do we recommend, right? So we can recommend some, but again, with the hard caveat that there's a gap. They're they're prescriptive, and those prescriptions d- don't often align with your situation. So when you if you read a book like this, you just need to understand the underlying idea behind the the prescription. Like, why are they saying that I should do these things? And what's the actual sort of like structural piece of this that I can adapt to my own situation? So like with that in mind, mm-hmm. I'd say the two books that I think are have been the most useful for me with, with this approach is The Power of Habit and The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. Which is actually not about productivity, but, but it it's is. about it's mm-hmm. about restructuring your, your space so that you get the results that that you want from your life. Yeah, you and, and it's something to notice about that too. Is like because I've read both of those and I read the life changing measure of tidying up, and that that one has these like you know like it has like the spiritual layer to it that like to me is a huge turnoff like i don't like yeah, it that doesn't stuff, make any but, sense to me yeah. i like that part but, of it. <laughs> yeah but yeah. the question but, but when you approach these things if you still if you think there's something in there that is valuable you don't have to you don't have to care about all of it, right? Take you what works. You don't have you. to believe yeah. all of it, right? The question is yeah. just like, can you find the pieces in there? And, and to me, like this is why I got off the journey eventually, because I was like, eventually, I was like, it now takes so much reading to find a new piece, right? That yeah, because seems- you got the core yeah. ideas of how to how to improve things, yeah. you know, for yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah for me, it was the, mine. Still, one is left is getting things done, and not because I think the approach is actually good, but because that's so that was like the first one on my own journey when I was back in grad school. Yeah, a million same. Years ago. I probably read in two thousand seven or something. Yeah, and the, but the thing yeah. that it did that I liked is is its focus. Although I don't think it actually puts it in these words, um, but now I would say, like in retrospect, its focus was on surfacing the right stuff at the right time. It was about yeah. it was about making work visible, as well. capturing everything and making work visible. Yeah, capturing everything, making it visible, getting it to the right time. And so it's an approach to do that, and an approach that, like to me, is wildly too expensive and hard to, too hard to maintain, and not appropriate the, in the modern yeah, the era. The biggest caveat for that one is just that it is it will make you do more things. It will not necessarily yeah. make you do more of the important things. And that's yeah. So yeah. So, so exactly, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't put it into practice, but I would treat it as a yeah. case study of how to like think about applying structure to problems, right? Yes, and, I agree. Yeah. And a price of, and like the the only like actual piece that I took away that I've that I've kept forever from that like as a detail was the inbox zero concept. But that's actually just a little piece of make the work visible, which is about also being at the right time, right? So, uh, so there there are and so I think, and and this is one of the things that I can now in retrospect, it's like I that's that's that piece that I was able to extract from that that has over the years converted into what we're doing, you know, internally, like the, like the, the tools that we're building to manage our own work and that kind of stuff, all like fundamentally come down to that one distilled core idea and getting to see somebody attempt to build that can be really informative and give you a lot of Absolutely. ideas about things that you can do. But again, but yeah, as Sam said, it, an enorm- it, infinite pile of salt, which is like, I don't think you should put any of it into practice. Well, here's, I think you should, if you haven't done anything before and the reason yeah, it's is fair. because cuz it is pretty, I yeah, think, that's true. Yeah. I think there's a there's a lot of beauty in like a in basically the brute force detail orientation approach that that mm-hmm. inspires in terms of like it is the it, it really gets the, you in there. It gets you yeah. in there in in a way it that makes you think meet, you meet yeah. the paper, right? Like it's you yeah. are there, you are doing the thing in a way that some of the more abstract ones that are basically levels up from that in terms of uh higher level approaches that are harder for you to translate then back into how right because you, you actually so, you can just start with decisions that are already made exactly which is an easier way to start than try to figure out how to start in the first how place. do you think so, yeah. yeah so i yeah i totally agree with that i think i think um for me it's and again to the point about how to read books in general any book could be a self-help book believe it or not if you again yep. if you're like how does this if you think about it um <laughs> how does the journey of frodo to mount mordor apply to my Daily living, you know, it's like it's the same question again, again. But um, the two for me are probably "Thinking Fast and Slow" by Daniel Kahneman, which is a it's actually about how your brain works. Uh, again, fantastic book. If you're reading through it with the idea of like 
how can I use the fact that I now have a better understanding of literally how my neurobiology functions, right? Uh, very nice. And then the other one is more art related, but uh, I mentioned it before. It's the first art book. I've read a bunch of art books trying to figure out, again, what's the secret? How are people producing stuff both at a higher level than I am? And how are they seeming to enjoy themselves while they're doing it? Because I wasn't, right? So how do they find their motivation? Yeah, well, it's like, yeah, how, is, <laughs> how come this like kind of sucks for me, but it doesn't suck. It doesn't seem like it sucks for the people. Like, how do I close that gap? Uh, yeah. And that was the uh, Drawn to Life series, which is by uh, Walt Stanchfield. And again, same thing where it's like, it's each one of them, each one of like the little chapters is like two or three pages. And it's a very, very particular thing talking about like, how do you do this? How do you do that? Um, but it was the first book that the overall approach finally resonated with me in a way where I was like, this is actually what I was looking for. You know, all I, mm -hmm. how do I think about this? This is usually my question. How do I think about this in a way that is good, not just for my productivity, but so I enjoy it. Right. Uh, and that was the yeah. one that worked for me. So that's what I recommend. Yeah. Okay. So I, I, mean, I hope those, I hope those recommendations help, but again, mm -hmm. think about it. Yeah. yeah it's, and, and the value That's of the, the reading, thing. the value of the reading of them is just the source of things to think about, right? So if you read widely, but not with the idea that the things you're reading are literally true, right? But if you read widely and then think deeply, then... That's that's what gives you the ability to start actually reasoning about what your own truth is and what you can be doing to make things easier. Yeah. So hope that helps. And if it does, you know, maybe uh, six months from now, drop us another podcast question with some info on I love it. how it went for I you. I follow I'd be up. curious to hear about it. Uh, that's all the time we have for this week. We'd like to thank our producers, Fat Bard and Sampa DaCosta, for putting the podcast together. And thanks to our community moderators who keep our Discord running. To get more involved in the Butterscotch community, just go to podcast.bscotch.net, where we have links to the community Discord, a way for you to donate, and links to the podcast archives. And as a, another reminder, the Crash Institute demo will be coming down. It will be unavailable uh, after August 5th. So if you haven't played it yet, get in there and play it. Uh, and as always, uh, if you haven't yet, give Crash Instance 2 a wish list on Steam. It'll help boost the game's visibility for launch, and uh, we would appreciate it. So thank you all for listening, and we'll see you next week. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.